vaccine passports are a type of discrimination and I'm very much against that type of discrimination. What I would like to say is I'm removing that <laughs> statement. Good. We're gonna start with Marjorie Taylor Greene, okay? <laughs> I know, that's like, okay, a perfect way to start talking about the Holocaust. But it's what inspired this talk because Marjorie Taylor Greene compared mask mandates to the Holocaust. Now, she's not alone in making comparisons to the Holocaust, right? A lot of people make comparisons to the Holocaust. I see it on the left and the right. So this is just like a human trend is that they like making comparisons. Obviously, her comparison was particularly bad because she compared mass mandates to the Holocaust, right? We're going to listen to her logic and that comparison and, of course, how she changes her mind when she goes to the Holocaust Museum. Now, I encourage you guys to go to the Holocaust Museum it is not like I've been to like every fucking museum that I can and Holocaust museums are unique, right? There's something really unique about them. There's stuff that you can only learn in person that you just can't learn in like, you know, from me or from a book or anything like that. There's like a very unique experience, especially when you see how um, modernized this factory of death really is. And I think that that is something that really just gets lost in the equation. The Holocaust is really a creation of like the modernized world. It's a modern genocide. We've seen genocides happen over and over again, but we've never seen something like this. Like this is very, very unique. And hopefully we never see something to that level again. So we will listen to Marjorie Taylor Greene talking about so Vera, this. Let's talk about Republicans here for a minute because Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. So this is, is kind of what happened. This was a few weeks ago. She makes this comparison, right? Marking controversy again. And I just want to reiterate, She's not the only one that does this. Shit. People love comparing everything to Jews. I don't know why. Like, I mean, even the Jewish space lasers thing, whenever people want to make any kind of comparison, they love comparing them to Jews or to the Holocaust. And I just think it's like, it's a bad idea. It'll get you in hot water um, because it kind of just, it hides the uniqueness of what this event really was. And it feels a little disrespectful. And this time for comparing mass restrictions in the house to the Holocaust. Of course, some Republican lawmakers did condemn her remarks, but they're also the same Republicans who either voted to impeach former President Trump or voted to strip green of her committee assignments over her past controversial remarks. So, Garrett, you know, how is Republican leadership really handling this this latest dust up, this latest controversy surrounding her yet again? Well, so far they aren't, Morgan, and that's frankly the only reason. It's because the, in the U.S., the Holocaust is seen as a symbol of pure evil. Yeah, and I don't like that kind of terminology. Was the event, like, an evil event? Sure. It's a horrible event. But acting like the people who perpetrated were just evil, and that's, it's just like this, it's a very childlike view of what happened, and I feel like that kind of logic is what lets people, lets us commit these atrocities over and over again because we're not being honest about the real incentives that led to this kind of led to the holocaust particularly hateful incentives reason i'm interested in talking about this story at all marjorie taylor green has made it her business to say incendiary right. and disgusting things as a backbench member of the minority party in congress who's been stripped of her committee she has no power here she's not relevant and so most of what she does is for attention which i'm reticent to give her the challenge here is she is still a member of this body and she's still a member of the republican conference who has not been disciplined by the republican party in any way and i think that tells you something about republican leadership that's worth keeping an right. eye on it's also instructive for how democrats are responding to it um we're starting to see more and more democrats tweeting about green as a, as a leader in the republican party essentially baiting I think Kevin the demonization of Nazis ironically makes it hard for us to call out people when they run, are used House rhetoric Democrats similar to Nazis. Much yep, run exactly. That makes right. You got it 100%. Things that come out of her mouth. The people who engaged in the Holocaust were not evil. Was the act evil? For sure. But the people who were engaging in it, they had bought certain ideologies. And it's important that we're, we examine how human that is. We act, try to act like they're like just these subhuman people that committed this subhuman event. It's kind of a way of telling us, oh, well, we can never be those monsters. 
The truth is we can be. One of the reasons why the Nazis started to use gas chambers was originally the Nazis were doing what was called like mass shootings. So they would force the Jews to kind of dig out their own, like dig out these mass graves. And then they would force, force Jews to lie in the grave sometimes or on the edge of the grave. And then they would shoot them. I know this is really gross stuff, right? But yeah, they would shoot them and you know, they would fall into the mass graves. Like that's how, and they, that was originally how the Nazis wanted to plan and orchestrate the Holocaust. And the reason why they did away with this plan, number one was because bullets were expensive. This is again, going back to the industries, the industrial like tization of the Holocaust, right? And number two was because it was traumatic for the SS soldiers. And keep in mind, people who were SS soldiers were dogmatic. Like, it wasn't like just the typical German army. Like, people who signed up for the SS were believed in the dogma. They believed in, you know, in the entire kind of, like, Nazi rhetoric and Nazi ideology. And even still, they were really disturbed by doing this, right? Like, they were grossed out by what they were doing. They hated what they were doing. They, need, they were, like, traumatized. And we have records of this from Nazis, right? Of how traumatized they were engaging in such violent and awful things, like killing babies and killing innocent women and all this stuff. It was, it particularly was really emotionally horrible to them. Um, and so we have records from the Nazis talking about, oh, like this is a problem where we're having so many SS men like being, uh, you know, they're, they're too sensitive to this. So one of the reasons why they created a solution like the gas chambers right was there's a reason why it's hidden in like a box you know like in a and the ss men who are engaging who are perpetrating the who are putting in the gas they're on the top and they can't see what's going on there's a reason for that and it's it's purposely to kind of hide the gruesomeness the violence right because the people who are doing this are human and humans have empathy even nazis and they try to get around that so it's like it's really it's really unique in school, we never talk about the ideological aspects of how Nazi ideology was justified and became popular. I think that's way more important than just saying the Nazis killed a lot of people. Yeah, and the thing about the Holocaust, it's not about how many people they killed. That's like the really wrong way to look at it. It's about how they were killed and why they were killed and the post effect of what happened after they were killed. It's like unique. It's one of the reasons why the Holocaust is such a big deal. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, like, why do we talk so much about the Holocaust compared to, like, these other genocides or these other massacres where so many more people died? And the re it's because of how unique and orchestrated and industrialized, like, the Holocaust really is. Then, uh, on some other policy arguments, perhaps, they would like to run on both, but if they can make Marjorie Taylor Greene the face of the Republican House and not That's Kevin true, McCarthy and not some whomever Republicans nominate sure. in swing districts, Obviously, that helps Democrats to, potentially like, retain Nazis. control of that But it was common that enough that they had to adjust yeah, I have system. to say, uh, whenever we do reporting together, I always appreciate your context to these issues, but even more important than yes, that, I Callum. appreciate your Oh, candor. for sure. So thank you as that's, always. That's one of the most important things because I think like learning how do people get from being just a normal everyday kid that like grows up, loves baseball, all this stuff. How does that person grow up to, you know, be pouring like Zyklon B into a gas chamber and killing a hundred, you know, killing a thousand Jews in literally one minute? Ideology plays a huge role. Ways for bringing your ideas can be dangerous. to these stories. Thank you. Gary. Thanks, Morgan. So. Her logic with making this comparison to the Holocaust was that like masks are, they're like mandated clothing. It's very like authoritarian. It's very fascist to be like requiring them. And Jews were forced to wear, you know, um, they were forced to wear a Jewish star. They were also forced to, to certain mandated clothing as well. But while the Jewish star thing factors into the Holocaust, the overall Holocaust is not really about the, the wearing the Jewish star. The thing that makes the you know, the Holocaust particularly unique is the death camps. And that's really what I want to get into. Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene in a remark she made comparing mask mandates to the horrors of the Holocaust. But predictably and also shamefully, the Georgia Republican is doubling down on her comments. Take a listen. I stand by all of my statements. I said nothing wrong. And I think any, any rational Jewish uh -huh. person didn't like what happened in, in Nazi Germany, and any rational Jewish person doesn't like what's happening with overbearing oh mask God. mandates and overbearing vaccine policies. Do you understand, this though, why so some crazy. would be upset and offended by the comment? Well, do you understand how people feel about being forced to wear masks or being forced to have to take a vaccine? Or this is like, 
Honestly, a part of me doesn't even blame her. It's like, who taught her this? I hate the way the Holocaust is taught in schools. I hate it, right? Like acting like the Holocaust. And I, I feel like sometimes Americans particularly teach the Holocaust in a way that it's like, what was bad about the Holocaust was how authoritarian the Nazis were. Because of course, as we know, you know, the United States is very much like all nations have their founding myths. And the United States is very founded on this idea of like freedom and absent from an authority, etc. So of course, when they teach anything, everything's going to have a spin like that. The issue with the Holocaust was, was authoritarianism. And it's ironic because it was really the democratic system that led to Hitler being able to take power. So it's a total misunderstanding of what happened and all that kind of stuff. And like the way she's kind of framing that, that like the issue with what the Nazis did was authoritarian. It's like they were able to perpetrate what they did, you know, much more easily because of how authoritarian they were. But that wasn't. That's that that isn't the problem, right? Like that's not like that's not what really led to the Holocaust. Or even have to say that whether they've taken it or not. These are just things that shouldn't be happening in America. Hitler wasn't elected though. He was appointed not democratic at all. Wait, he was appointed by an elected system that was literally in power because of the election. He wasn't technically elected, but it was the democratically ele like elected system that allowed him to take power. This is a free country. To be clear, there is no equivalence here, but for reference, here is Green's original comment. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. Oh no, the comment's even worse. CNN Suzanne Malvo is up on Capitol Hill for us. Suzanne, how are members of Congress responding to this? Once again, members of Congress uh, are going to be asked about Marjorie Taylor Greene's comments uh, that just are beyond the pale once again. Well, Jim, there are a lot of lawmakers who are speaking out today saying it is outrageous, it's offensive. At but you see, like, this is why, like, that she just thinks the Holocaust is wearing yellow stars. And the yellow stars led to them being put on trains and the trains led to the gas chambers. That is such a fucked up way to understand the Holocaust. So part of me is not even angry at her. I'm like, I'm angry at the education system that led to her thinking that way. At the very least, it is very ignorant of her to say these comments, but I should also let you know, there doesn't seem to be much appetite for punning, punishing her necessarily for these comments. She had already lost her committee assignments a long time ago for, for previous uh, controversial and offensive comments that she's made in the past. It is possible that Congress could censure her, but there doesn't seem to be any discussion or move afoot about this. But there are individual members, lawmakers, who say that it is absolutely unacceptable that she's using this language, making these kind of ridiculous comparisons. Uh, we did hear from freshman Republican uh, Congressman Peter uh, Meyer. Yep, he exactly, is somebody Lynn. who uh, Carrie, voted thank for you so much for resubscribing. Impeachment with Brian. also thank you. supports. Uh, the independent because remember your prime um, uh, subs have to constantly be redone. Invest investigation yeah, I appreciate all subs. I'm having a hard sub month. So. On the Capitol, yeah, and I appreciate had some the subs very today. Thank you. Words for Congresswoman Green. Any comparisons to the Holocaust, um, it's beyond reprehensible. Oh, thank you, Thomas. Thank you uh, so much is... for contributing on Patreon. Thank I, you. I don't even have words to describe how disappointing it is to see uh, this, this hyperbolic speech. Uh, that frankly amps up and, and plays into a lot of the anti-Semitism that we've been seeing in our society today. Uh, vicious attacks on, mm -hmm. on the streets of New York and in Los Angeles. Um, that should be, and I do condemn that in the strongest terms, there is no excuse for that. And Jim, most people are actually weighing Eris, in on Twitter have, with this conversation um, and their Canada criticism. So we heard from, from time to Congresswoman time Liz Cheney like saying this is evil lunacy. Oh, Congressman yeah, Adam Kinzinger saying absolute sickness. And then a Democrat Congressman Jim yeah, even Liz weighing Cheney? in as well saying Liz Representative like Green's anti-Semitic language comparing the systematic murder of six million Jews during the Holocaust to wearing a mask is beyond yeah, And this is why I think it's so important when you're criticizing Israel, do not ever ever make comparisons to the Holocaust. Never do it. Um, this is a mistake that I see a lot of groups falling into a lot. They'll think like, oh, like we want to make a comparison because we're just trying to show how Gazans are living in a prison and all of that stuff. And it's like, no, the Holocaust was not just a prison. The Holocaust was not just an occupation. It's so much more than that. It's just like you do not want to make comparisons. And on top of that, you do not want to use a people's 
um, historical oppression against them. It's just kind of gross. You don't need to do it to be critical of Israel. There's plenty of other reasons to just don't engage in that kind of stuff. You will get called anti-Semitic. Do you think that it's fair to compare certain far-right um, forms of Zionism to fascism? I don't know. It, it, that goes into wh what is fascism. And basically, there's no actually accepted definition of what if, is fascism now. I would have to think about that one. In my school, the Diary of Anne Frank, a unit on the Holocaust unit every year. Yeah, okay. The reason why I don't like studying the Diary of Anne Frank for the Holocaust is because the Diary of Anne Frank takes place when she's in hiding. I guess it's understanding the hiding part of that a lot of Jews went through the Holocaust. But like, I feel like you need to examine what was literally going on with the people who got caught who were like, and eventually she does get caught. And that's really fucking, really fucking sad. But we don't have the diary entries from her, obviously, when she was dying. I think she died of typhus, right? Um, in one of the work camps. Not 100% sure. Yeah, no, I do think far right Zionism is really gross um, and can be really dangerous. Yeah, this is also why I don't like most Holocaust movies. Yep. A person who needs to apologize and resign. GOP leader needs to address her anti-Semitism, Jim. It is notable uh, that there are no tweets from the GOP leadership. There doesn't seem to be any appetite for at least publicly addressing what she has said. Jim. Right, Suzanne, I mean, that is the big question at this hour is where is the comment from Kevin McCarthy, the House Minority Leader, other Republican leaders in the House? Why aren't they condemning this? Uh, we'll be following it, and I know you'll stay on top of it as well, Suzanne Lavo. Uh, thanks so much for being with us. And joining me now is Rabbi Joshua Stanton, who is a senior fellow uh, at the National Jewish Center for Leadership, Learning and Leadership. Uh, Rabbi, let's talk about why this talk is so dangerous to compare something uh, like a mask mandate to the Holocaust. I mean, obviously, it's ridiculous uh, to compare a mask mandate or mask restrictions to the Holocaust. But I think even more uh, disturbing here is is the potential to minimize that must ride, I'm the not profound sure. seriousness of that. the Holocaust when you engage in this kind of rhetoric. It's an appropriation of our history. It is a misuse yeah, Lehi, I would and a false as, understanding as of history sure. it's that can continue fashion. to cause unnecessary deaths among Jews and among so many people. It is not her place to tell people what happened yeah, during the Holocaust. Yeah, poor thought she just apologized. That's In why fact, we're talking about it. In fact, it is the place of those who are victims and children of victims and grandchildren. If you were I to look at my resist. family tree, you would see that most branches have been cut off summarily. And so it is not her place. If anything, perhaps it is a bit more of mine Schindler's to list. describe the significance it's not really of those dark times. The problem with Schindler's List, it's a good movie. context, and numbers but never it's not do a story justice. about Jews. The it's a story about realities. a non-Jewish man coming to terms population in the with world his own still um, not bigotry. Recovered it's a great, since great movie, but it's not really about Jews are still on down because we lost so many people, and our hearts remain broken. You cannot destroy a third of an entire people and expect us somehow to go back to business as usual, as though life were just normal. And then to have a leader in the United States speak falsely about our history, to weaponize it against us, to use it not just in wolf whistles, but in actual anti-Semitic tropes, to speak of something like a Jewish space laser. This is hate. The leadership needs to speak out against her. I find Representative both speaking McCarthy the best medium to understand it. I, I to the totally Jewish community the to either speak out against her or push her to resign. And I so miss the time but when parties But another good way to understand it is through watching the stream because we are going to be getting into the details. We'll be listening to an amazing to historian, violence, Dr. Henry Abramson. Um, uh, he studies Jewish history. This well, is that his is, thing. That's absolutely we'll true. We'll be listening to uh, his lectures on the Holocaust. We just don't see enough of that in Washington and anymore. And I'll be talking uh, a lot about, about, you, though, about um, Green was the aspects that I've learned in history and all that stuff. What would you say to her? What would you say to her? What would you say to her? A lot of people don't know that the reason why, how I originally got known, I guess, in like this online space was because I would debate Holocaust deniers. Originally, I wasn't open about being Jewish because I was literally a crypto Jew. Um, because I was, in, I was talking to so many Nazis that like, I didn't want them to know I was Jewish for safety reasons, right? And it's why, to this day, I still don't show my face. Even though I would love to show my face to you guys. Like, this is why I use the avatar. Um, it's because 
I like, you know, I originally kind of came to the scene by debating Holocaust scenarios. So there are just so many, you know, nasty groups of people that just absolutely hate my guts. And so for safety, I feel very uncomfortable at the idea of just putting my face out there because then they can make memes and they spread it around their Discord servers and potentially dox me. Just not a good time for me. It's one of the reasons why I was kind of like, so I was kind of so shocked when I first kind of came on the scene. There are so many leftists that were like against me being a cartoon. And I was like, wait, I thought leftists were all all about being like consent and safety and all this stuff. Like you would think that like people would be understanding of me wanting to, you know, set a boundary on what I'm personally comfortable with. Right. And be like and be respectful of that. But uh, yeah, not not really. So hashtag cartoon rights. Right. Message to her right now. I would say stop speaking. Start Why the with- avatars what caught your interest? Well, Kiki, okay, yeah, I appreciate that. I think the problem is some people maybe might not like take it seriously or something like that. But I hope that just watching a little bit of my content just proves them wrong. Uh, I always try to make sure that my streams are really high quality. Obviously, I'm never going to be able to achieve kind of like scholarly, 100 percent, you know, rigorous academic level. But I try to get really close. I really want to be that bridge between like the average person and connecting to real scholarly attitudes and, you know, teachings of history. Listening, start learning. Join me when it becomes safe after the pandemic, God willing. Join me on a trip to Auschwitz. Join me on a trip to some of the horrific ghettos. Join me on a trip so that you can actually learn what the Holocaust was about. Rather, I agree. Either go to a Holocaust museum or better, if you can manage to go to Auschwitz. Auschwitz is just one of the many death camps, but it was the largest. So just going there, I think is a very unique experience and I really encourage you guys to do it. It will, first of all, it'll make you really appreciate the freedom you live in right now. Number one, there is not a day that goes by as a Jewish person that I am not like, holy fuck, I am so grateful that I am not living in that environment as my grandfather did. It's really important because there's just only so much that like a book or a movie can teach you. Like just seeing all the shoes, the collection of the thousands and thousands of shoes. There's a reason like Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of Fatah, used to deny the Holocaust. And then later he would start downplaying the Holocaust. He went to Auschwitz, completely changed him. There's something very unique about just going there and seeing it for yourself and just seeing like physically all the effects of it. It's a really unique experience and I would encourage you to do it if you have an opportunity. There's a special program called March of the Living that I know it's free for anyone who's Jewish. And I think they count someone who's Jewish the same way Hitler does, that if you have like one grandfather, one grandparent. Okay, well anyways, so Marjorie Taylor Greene ends up taking this criticism for real, right? Good for her. And she apologizes. I mean, she's not gonna apologize for the Jewish space lasers. (laughs) But yeah, she just apologized too, like this happened like yesterday. I have made a mistake and it's really bothered me for a couple of weeks now and so I definitely want to own it. This afternoon I visited the Holocaust Museum. The Holocaust is, there's nothing comparable to it. It's, it's, it happened in, you know, over six million Jewish people. I actually broke down in Auschwitz, so did my other Jewish friends who visited a later time. It was a horrifying experience, yes. For sure. People were murdered. More than that, there were not just Jewish people, black people, Christians, all kinds of people, children, people that that the Nazis didn't believe were good enough or perfect enough. And the horrors of the Holocaust are something thing that it. some people don't even believe happened and some people deny, but there is no comparison to the Holocaust. And there are words that I have said and remarks that I've made that I know are offensive. And for that, I want to apologize. And I am, I am just fine. Do you think she's very glad with us? to be I able feel to like come out here and do that because I believe it's important. I believe that uh, forced mask and forced uh, vaccines or vaccine passports are a type of discrimination. And I'm very much against that type of discrimination. What I would like to say is I'm removing that <laughs> statement oh, completely away from what I had said before. Another there is no comparison. No, I just want to say there is stickers. no comparison to the Holocaust and there never should be. And that's what I'm sorry for. Now, I probably think, I think the average person watching this, well, not the deadly tentacles, but I, I mean, the average person is like, oh, like I know what happened in the Holocaust. But the truth is, 
Very few people do. We think that there's this kind of narrative that we teach almost too much of the Holocaust, right? But we don't teach it right. Both in the United States and Canada, like I've never seen a good Holocaust education system ever for, for like high school students. And it's super, super shitty. It's really, really, really important to understand the specifics of what happened. And people say the Holocaust, oh, the Holocaust, six million, trains, you know, gas chambers, all this stuff. No, like you need to learn about the specifics of what happened. 